All right, so you come out and get both wins. Last time you, you wrestled her, she beat you at the Open. What was the, the difference this time? Uh, just solid pressure. I knew if I kept going forward, I knew she wasn't going to beat me. I knew I had it in me. I just, uh, I beat myself up, you know. If I lose, I feel like genuinely, it's not because a person's better than me. I think I beat myself up. And, you know, after I lost to the Open, I punished myself. 51 seconds, I gave up that match. And I hit the lead, and I did sprints. I did air dine. I did everything I could think of for 51 seconds just to beat myself up to make sure that just like that, when I'm winning, I have a lead to make sure I close it out. And cause that's what's going to be like at the World Championship. As long as I put the pressure on them, they're going to get tired and I can open up and start scoring. Do you like it better when you're the one chasing someone than being chased? Uh, you know, I think for a long time in my career I was, uh, you know, the underdog. And then I burst onto the seat and made my first world team in 14. And that pressure broke me. Uh, I ended up having my worst year of my whole career in 15. Uh, you know, I thought it was the end of the world for me. <laughs> thought I said I should maybe leave the sport and uh, chase my other dream, which was being a counselor. Uh, but then I just had to remember who that little girl was that started the sport and uh, why I did it, and because I genuinely love the sport. So to answer your question, you know, I should be ready to go at all times. I think that people who make it to the top and they have to hold it, the Jordan Burroughs of the world, and I tip my hat off. It's an incredibly hard thing to do, and I'm still working to always train like I'm the underdog, always train like I'm losing, but always have the confidence like I'm the number one. So. She was able to get to your leg in that first match, and that was actually how she scored at the Open. <laughs> yeah. Did you kind of panic there, or, or what was what was kind of going through your head? No, I didn't panic. I just uh, trusted, my, trusted my training. We've been doing so many of those goes where I was getting the early lead, and I had a short time left, and... It was exactly like the open, it was exactly like how I trained. And I could hear my coaches, you know, get my hips back, you know, head up, swivel my hips. And, you know, I knew that I was never gonna accept defeat. I was not gonna let her get that last take down on me. So I didn't panic, I just trusted my training. The vast majority of us have never been in that position where you're on top and you're talking about what you, you dealt with in 2015. What what makes it so challenging? What is, can you elaborate on that? What it? I think you work your butt off to be the number one. And then when I when I made it, I had I put all this pressure, you know, aside from what other people and the coaches put on me, I put my own pressure. I had to be perfect. I had to do this and I had to do that. I was listening to 10 different coaches and I really wanted to take all their input. But at the end of the day, you can't take 100 people's input. You got to take, you know, a couple here and there. You take it all with a grain of salt. And the other day, you trust your roots. And I think everybody has that pressure, right? I, I know, you know, soldiers, when you're on deployment, and you're missing home and you're in the battlefield and all these different things, you know, there's other life stressors than a wrestling mat. This to me is the easiest thing. You know, I know my fellow soldiers that are out there and fellow Marines, we're all out there doing a different job. And, you know, I can't take wrestling that seriously because there's more serious things in the world. There's traumatic things that happen all the time. And it's the people that I see on different social media, you know, where they have cancer and they overcome it. You know, I relate that to wrestling. Not that it's the same thing, just, I don't want to sound ignorant, but like, you know, to overcome that and have the optimism to do those sort of things, it's, it's amazing. So I think, I think you're wrong in a sense that everybody's got their battles in different ways and you just have to learn to take that with a little bit of optimism and trust yourself and trust what you have to do. And, you know, at the end of the day, you'll rise above it. Jenny, where are these big glasses? We're almost saying there's a different persona with you when you have mine, when you don't, is it? Uh, yeah, I think JB is JB. I think I'm always Jenna. I think Space said it right, you know, I'm really goofy and I'm the Joker and then I turn into this little alter ego when I'm on the mat like no I'm really the Joker like I really believe that I'm an agent of chaos out there and so when I am up and it's a short time I, I control that chaotic uh, event you know I know she's not gonna rise above that because I created that chaos and I know I'll prevail so I don't know if it's the glasses or not but whatever it is it's working. So last year when you were at Final X and you know, we talked yesterday and you said that you know the atmosphere kind of got to you a little bit what was the difference this year and, and how did you feel you know coming out of that tunnel? Uh, you know, I work with a sports psychologist a lot, and, uh, you know, I knew that when those things were happening to me, like, when if I got those nerves, that I just kept telling myself that, you know, fear is a good thing, because fear excites me, fear motivates me, fear is, like, this adrenaline that I, I actually love fear, and instead of being afraid of it and, and running from it, like I was last year, like, oh, I'm so nervous because I want to win so bad, I, like, embrace it, like, yeah, I want to win so bad, like, I want to do this, I want to represent the country, I want to qualify the weight. And so now, you know, I put this job on me as an Olympic weight, and I'm proud to do it. I'm proud to get this medal and sit in a really pretty position next year. Jenna, you're a New York native. How was it competing so close to home? It was amazing. I wore black and red for the Rutgers. I was hoping they were liking this. Uh, I took a little mock off Anthony Ashtell's singlet, and I was talking to Adidas, and I was like, yeah, I really want a black and red one uh, to represent Rutgers, and hopefully they liked it. And it's just good to be on the East Coast. Uh, enjoying myself. My family's out here. I have some younger athletes that are here that, uh, you know, they watched me grow up wrestling in New York. So it's an honor to be back on the East Coast. 
Talk about being your final match at Final X when uh, the hype is all around you. Do you embrace that? Do you love that? I do love it. It's a, it's a crazy thing to be a female wrestler and be the biggest match of the first session. That's an honor. It's a great thing. It shows how women's wrestling is growing. It shows that people, people like competitive wrestlers. You know, people like people that have heart out there. And I think whether you're women's freestyle, your Greco, or your men's freestyle, like we're all out here trying to represent our country. And I think, I think the people of New Jersey seem to like it. So yeah, it was great to be the highlight match this morning. You know, the UNCAA now is considered women's wrestling as an emerging sport. What impact if you do well at the Worlds and maybe the Olympics could make that even come more true? I hope that people uh, on the East Coast where I'm from, uh, you know, because New York's got a lot of female wrestlers, I hope they see our athletes out there doing well and really fight for these programs to get, uh, you know, to be in the NCAA. It's, it's all, we can advocate for ourselves, but it's all these really great guys at all these uh, programs and these, uh, you know, the, uh, like Tom Brands, they're pushing for female wrestlers. They have, uh, you know, an RTC that's doing extremely well. It's all those guys that are buying into the program and they're like, you know what, not only do we want to train these guys, we want to wrestle with these girls and, and because we're all iron sharpens iron. So I hope they see how competitive we are and I hope all the NCAA programs start getting RTCs and inviting women and Greco so that we can truly grow this great sport. So you're back on the East Coast. You just uh, clean the spot. Where's the first spot you're going to get some food now? I gotta, I gotta ask Twitter or Instagram. I guess I gotta, <laughs> I gotta find out what's the best spot. I haven't really thought much into it because I was, I was trying to say in my own reality of the present because sometimes you know after I won the first one, I kept thinking about people that voted against me that I knew personally who voted against me, and I was like, yeah, I can't wait to go up to them and tell them like I just made this team. And then I was like, Jenna, slow down. We gotta make this damn team first. We, you know, we gotta win the second match. So my coach always tell me one second at a time, one minute at a time, one match at a time. So I wasn't even trying to think about the food or the desserts or anything like that. I was like, we gotta get the job done first. <laughs> but if you have any spots, let me know. <laughs> you talked about.